Hello, everyone. It's my absolute honor to be here to talk to all of you about Airflow 3. I'm Vikram Koka, the Chief Strategy Officer at Astronomer. I've been with Astronomer for a little over five years now, primarily leading our engineering team, including our open source team, which works on Apache Airflow. I've been working with Apache Airflow since 2019. Initially, working on the architecture and design of Scheduler HA, which we released as part of Airflow 2.0. Since then, I've been part of architecture and design and proposals for various features, such as dynamic paths, data sets and data-driven scheduling, setup and teardown, and now Airflow 3. We started Airflow, actually Maxime created Airflow about 10 years ago. Thank you, Maxime. Well, <laughs> and some of the key pivotal moments in Airflow history included Airflow 1.0 in 2015, Airflow becoming a top level project led by Balka and others in early 2019, and I and the astronomer team, we actually started working on Airflow 2.0. And our primary focus at that point in time was really around making sure that Airflow was enterprise production ready. That really was the focus. Ash and Caxel worked on Scheduler HA. Yarek, Kamel, and Tomek worked on the REST API. The Tasflow API was donated by the community. And that was a key set of changes which we did as part of Airflow 2.0. We also did the split of provider releases, which I think was one of the smarter things we actually did as part of it, which led to provider releases happening almost like in every two weeks now, generally being shepherded by Elad. Since then, we've actually had 10 feature releases in Core Airflow over the last three years, primarily focused on one of two things. One, making Airflow easier to use and more efficient to run, or second, on data awareness. We have taken pains as a community to make sure that these releases are backwards compatible and been very consistent and strict with our semantic versioning scheme. And I'm really pleased with the progress we have made to date. At the time of Airflow 2.0, we used to average roughly about 500,000 downloads a month. Now we are close to 30 million downloads from PyPy alone, but significantly greater numbers from Docker Hub. There are tens of thousands of enterprises using Airflow today, and we have Airflow contributors and committers from all over the world, many of whom have actually traveled 10,000 miles to actually be here with us today. But now it's time for more. As we started thinking about Airflow 3 and about where do we take Airflow next, the first place we looked at was really the Airflow survey. For those of you who may not be aware, we as a community send out the Airflow survey every year. If you haven't heard of it, please do take the time to respond. We actually take the feedback from the survey very seriously, and then we actually try to understand what these actually mean. The initial feedback from the survey honestly wasn't very surprising. DAG versioning was number one on the wish list from the Airflow survey and has been for three years running. There's more requests for security options and guardrails. Generally, that made a lot of sense. But clearly, surveys don't tell the entire and complete picture. Outside of the survey, we had lots of conversations with people using Airflow today and people not yet using Airflow. And that led us to the core themes for Airflow 3. The first theme which we focus on for Airflow 3 was really making Airflow easier to use. Airflow is a mature product and is being used in tens of thousands of companies. There is always room for incremental improvement. Beginning with DAG versioning, which enables historical views of a DAG run, because DAGs change over time. Looking at all the logs and all the information on prior DAG runs has been something which DAG authors have asked for, data engineers have asked for, for years, and this will be a part of Airflow 3. The Airflow UI is really appreciated by end users and has been a key part of its success. 
an overall update of the Airflow UI based on React, including support for embedded plugins, will absolutely be a part of Airflow 3. There's a really nice early peek from Brent a couple of days ago, and I think that's actually received very positive reactions already. Backfills at scale, which also enables backfills to be performed directly from the Airflow UI. This is especially needed for MLOps because of the need to rerun backfills based on change in models. As we know from the survey, roughly 30% of Airflow users use Airflow for MLOps today, and this is a key use case which will be part of Airflow 3. Task isolation and stronger security posture. This made us think a lot. So let's take a look at this in more detail. After spending a lot of time looking at this, we decided that task isolation needs an architecture change in Airflow. Why? In the current Airflow architecture, the DAG file processor reads all the DAGs, parses them, and stores them in a serialized form in the Airflow Meta database. The scheduler then reads these serialized DAGs, and when the time is right for an individual task to be scheduled, it sends the task over to an Airflow worker to run. The Airflow worker then pulls information again from the meta database, such as task context, secrets, connections, whatever it needs to run, runs it on the Airflow worker, and then updates that information about the task completion status into the Airflow meta database. When you actually look at the Airflow UI, the Airflow UI pulls information through the web server from the Airflow meta database and displays that information. Now, why is there a problem? Task isolation is a problem here because every task which is written in Python has access to the shared Airflow meta database and can execute SQL, which can perform read-write operations on this shared database. Clearly, this would be a self-inflicted wound because of somebody making a mistake in their SQL. But in a large organization with data engineers sharing the same Airflow deployment and therefore the, the same Airflow metadatabase, the potential for unintended consequences is significant. A core part of Airflow 3 in the architecture is to change the architecture with respect to the communication between the Airflow workers and the Airflow metadatabase. This is covered in great detail as part of AIP 72, but here's a quick high-level overview. We are now going to introduce a task execution interface between the tasks being executed in the workers and the Airflow meta database. Airflow tasks will now communicate with an API server, which will be part of the Airflow server components. In practice, though, you don't actually have to manage a new component. The API server will be part of the Airflow web server, but it is going to be a different endpoint. To have a clean separation of Python dependencies between the Airflow tasks and the Airflow server components, we're going to introduce a new distribution called the Airflow Task SDK, which contains all of the objects which are needed to interact with the Airflow task execution interface and through that to the Airflow API server. The task execution interface will also include not only the initial context, but the status information to be sent back i.e. things like task completion status and so on and so forth. As part of this change, Airflow tasks will no longer have direct access to the Airflow meta database, which alleviates and solves the security problem identified earlier. Almost certainly the first reaction from anybody who's written DAGs is gonna be, wait, will my DAGs continue to work? The answer is absolutely yes as long as these are well-behaved DAGs. This is a key thing which you gotta be really aware of. If you're actually using the published Airflow interfaces, you're not directly making SQL calls to the Airflow database, yes. Ash did a demo a couple of days ago of showing an existing Airflow DAG written and performing with Airflow 2, running on an initial incarnation, a very early incarnation of Airflow 3 with the task SDK and showing how that works out of the box, but it does show deprecation warnings. So we absolutely intend this to be a clean migration. We absolutely don't want people to kind of say, hey, look, I need to do and rewrite 100% of my DAGs. 
But this is a significant change happening as part of Airflow 3. But this does enable us to do one more thing. This is what I'm most excited about as part of Airflow 3. And the biggest theme for Airflow 3, in my mind, is being able to run CAS anywhere, at any time, in any language. I know this sounds like an audacious statement. So let's dive into each part. Run anywhere. Airflow can now support multi-cloud deployments, including where the Airflow server components can run in a completely separate computing environment from Airflow workers. These Airflow workers can run on private clouds. They can even support edge deployments. This enables integration with enterprise applications, which can continue to be isolated to meet regulatory requirements and security concerns. Another common use case which this enables is Gen AI applications, wherein the vast majority of tasks could be data handling, handling of unstructured data, which could be done on regular CPU-based computing infrastructure. But there are certain tasks which are long running, need GPUs, which can be running on a completely different GPU-based computing infrastructure on things like a remote rented GPU cluster. This change even has benefits significantly even in single cluster deployments like today, such as the stronger security posture as discussed earlier, but also enables much easier version upgrades for Airflow. The separation of the Python dependencies between Task SDK and the Airflow server components enables Airflow upgrades to be performed independently. The server components can be upgraded based on the needs of the platform administrator, based on their schedule as they see fit, and the task SDK and the task components can be updated and upgraded based on the needs of the data team, based on their schedule as they see fit. This is also critical for distributed Airflow deployments, which is going to be far more common across computing clusters going forward. A mental model which we're using going forward with Airflow now is we're really splitting apart Airflow into server and client components, very similar to how you'd think about a web server and web client or web browser deployments. Task isolation is described in a lot more detail as part of AIP 72, but there is, which is the foundation for this. There's also a tremendous amount of work being done by gens as part of edge execution, which is one of the key things, enabling the run anywhere set of capabilities, which is going to be part of Airflow 3. Run at any time. Airflow has long been known for reliable deterministic orchestration but was initially limited to scheduled batch execution. Over time, we added data-driven scheduling, and I'm now excited to talk about a dramatic improvement and expansion with event-driven scheduling based on the data asset framework, which will be part of Airflow 3. This enables Airflow DAGs to run automatically when incoming data shows up. Data-driven scheduling introduced in Airflow earlier was limited to data handling within a single Airflow deployment. This now goes significantly beyond it to enable DAGs in Airflow to be triggered based on data showing up in, from external data systems and is a foundation for far more complete event-based integrations with Airflow and the overall data ecosystem. As part of expanding the time element in Airflow, we're also introducing data partitioning. This enables the targeted and efficient processing of really large data sets. In addition, we're in the process of adding ad hoc scheduling in Airflow 3 so that DAGs can be run independent of any data interval. This is a critical feature needed to support Gen AI inference execution and has been requested by multiple Airflow users who had to build custom frameworks on top of Airflow to support their Gen AI use cases. This will now be supported out of the box in Airflow 3. And as a result of these changes, Airflow 3 will now support the full range of DAG invocations going from scheduled batch, event-driven, 
and ad hoc execution. We're really excited about this. Run in any language. With Airflow 3, you can run in any language. We love Python, but that's not the only language being used by data application teams. As more software application teams build data applications, we want them to use Airflow in their language of choice. I, we want to meet them where they are, not require them to have to learn a new language and implement the integrations in a new language. We have already received requests from the community to add TypeScript support to Airflow for Gen AI applications, to add Kotlin support for enterprise application integration. Your first reaction may be, how the hell is that gonna work? If you think back to the task SDK and the task execution interface, the task execution interface is language independent. We're gonna create multiple task SDKs. The first task SDK, of course, is gonna be based on Python. A couple of days ago, Ash did an initial demo of a task SDK based on Golang. We'll be creating additional SDKs for additional languages based on demand from you and the larger community. A second key element, Airflow 3 will also be multilingual. This is a key difference. We expect that you can even write a DAG wherein your extract portion of the DAG is written in Java. It's an extract task. And it's written in Java to pull data from a Java-based enterprise application. You can then do your analysis, or actually your transformation first, in Python and SQL. You can do analysis in Scala. And then you may finally take the result of this analysis and put it into an enterprise application in Golang. Now, this is an interesting example, and this may or may not be reality, but the definite notion is that you can build integrations in multiple languages and incorporate them in the same pipeline. This also eliminates any concern of language lock-in for enterprises, which is critical in emerging use cases, as well as in migrations from legacy use cases. For example, in an AI use case, it's very common to start with implementing a model or like an invocation in Python. Much faster to get started that way, without a doubt. But later with adoption, there may be a desire to move this to a far more efficient invocation, potentially even in C++. With Airflow 3, you can do that. You can leave the entire pipeline as it is, just make the change to this one particular task invocation, and you can go forward with it. This eliminates any notion of language lock-in kind of going forward. In summary, we have two primary themes for Airflow 3. The first is making it easier to use for existing use cases and patterns. This is based on what you as a community voted for and told us. This includes DAG versioning, the Airflow UI, easier version upgrades, and many, many more features. But we're also excited about being able to expand Airflow dramatically with being able to run tasks anywhere, anytime, in any language. As we discussed earlier, this covers capabilities such as even driven scheduling and so much more. When is all this happening? We started very active discussions, and I'm smiling looking at Yarek here, on the 20th of April. And over the last three months, we've had a tremendous amount of activity as a community. Lots of discussions, we have voted on well over 15 airflow improvement proposals, lots of comments, and voting on these, and far more. We completed the set of AIPs on about what we would actually decide to do, as part, what we decided to do as part of Airflow 3 around about the first week of August. And now we are in the development phase. We expect to cut beta builds in January. We expect the beta to run for a couple of months and we plan to cut release candidates toward the end of March. This will then become GA after it passes the Apache voting process. One of the things I love the most about Airflow is the community. I personally feel privileged to be part of this wonderful collaborative community and the fact that we've been steadily and consistently growing over the last few years 
to now be the most popular Apache project ever from, a, from the standpoint of contributors. Gives me goosebumps. I would have waited for a second because the thing I want to do here is I really want to give a shout out because this would not have been possible without all the outstanding mentoring by the senior members of the community. When I started my journey, it was Ashton Caxel who guided me through my journey in becoming an Airflow contributor. Over the last year and a half, it's been Ilad, Jarek, Jed, Caxel, T.P. Chung, and others who have been guiding so many people into becoming, starting their initial contributions and becoming committers. Every year at Airflow Summit, we have multiple people wanting to present their talks on their journey in becoming a committer. I couldn't be more proud of this than any other thing which we do from a code standpoint. I'm also hugely appreciative of like all the work, like you know, Mark Lamberti, I think, trained well over tens of thousands of people on Apache Airflow. The astronomer Dev Riddle team, led by Kenton and Tamara and Brianna, they've actually done so much work with like newsletters and community meetups and all the work with respect to documentation and everything else, which makes Airflow adoption so much better. I really want to give a shout out to all this particular team who enable Airflow to really grow. So thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to seeing when we're going to hit the 5,000 contributor mark. With the community, Airflow 3 is a huge jump forward. With its ability to run anywhere, anytime, in any language. But as part of this, we need you. We're recruiting folks to try out Airflow 3 betas, especially around the capabilities of run at any time. There's a lot of new capabilities we're adding there. We have already had a couple of companies say they were going to be willing, they're willing to try it out in beta on Gen AI use cases. They're looking for more. Because of the expansion into new languages, we are also recruiting more contributors to add support for additional languages. I know yesterday or day before, somebody said Rust. But whatever language it is, please tell us. We want to hear from you. We want you to add capabilities. We want you to also tell us which languages would be of more interest for you. Finally, for everybody else, we want you to try out Airflow 3. As we launch it, we want you to deploy it into production with your products in your use cases. We want you to actually submit these talks. And next year at Airflow Summit, I'd be ecstatic to see dozens or more talks on successful deployments of Airflow 3. So we need you. Please let us know how we can help. We want to interact. This is a community effort. This is an interactive effort. We want to hear from you as part of this particular process.